I'm Clint Robinson. I'm the Director of State and Local Government Affairs here at Black and Beach. I've only been here 33 years. I'm a professional engineer. I got my undergraduate degree, Bachelor's of Science in Civil Engineering in 1985, and my Master's degree in Civil Engineering in 1991. So I've just got a few questions, and I'm hoping that these questions will prompt some other questions from you. Her planning for SMART is no easy task. How do you get our clients to the table to begin the planning process? You know, the first thing that we try to have people understand is that this isn't just technology for technology's sake. If you can look at it from a bigger vision and understand you can deliver technology in a way to where it impacts human life, improves the quality of life, saves money, uh, makes cities safer, makes them more livable, makes them more vibrant, that's what I think that people are excited. Kevin, uh, you've been working with entrepreneurs and growth accelerators a long time now. See the growth in your face now. Um, how, how, how do you get them hooked and keep them on track to keep the lights on? A lot of what we do at the Sprint Accelerator is for the benefit of the corporation. Um, and so keeping the lights on and keeping the corporation engaged, I think, is the first key. Um, and you have to be able to articulate the value back to the company. Now, on the other side of the equation, if we can offer up the opportunity to connect them to the people we know and to offer resources and to help them accelerate their business, help them get their first customer, help them generate positive revenue, uh, then, then the entrepreneurs are going to be engaged. So how can these students that are coming out and working for companies, how can you encourage them to, to innovate with big companies, small companies, kind of start, light that fire so that they can be entrepreneurs and innovators as they move along. If you have an idea, if you have a vision for how to make something better, how to innovate, whether it's a process, whether it's a product, whether it's a consumer experience, whatever it is, don't give up on that. Whether you're in a big company or a small company, don't give up on that idea. Um, that would be my, so we always tell people the, the best thing to do is take action in some way, shape, or form. So I'm going to move over to Scott. Tell us how you're monetizing data and learning even with artificial intelligence how to educate, advise, and direct our clients with data. I think one of the keys to thinking about data and analytics is to recognize that in the simplest form, it's about enabling smart decisions. And so the quality of the information, the purity of the process, um, sophistication of the systems all give you different monetization opportunities to use Clint's word. Take that same model and put it in the city context. The data is not so pure. Systems are not so well constructed. Uh, the ownership group, I'll say, of the decision is a necessary homogeneous or heterogeneous. You've got different stakeholders that have different views. So translating that monetization or that streamlined model into a city context is very challenging and it's very piecemeal at this point. So I think what we, what we see is, and we're confident that over time, the maturity of what we've seen in, in industries is going to carry into the city space. Could you share a little bit about data collection that, that you're doing now and answers that people are asking that we didn't know the answer to or didn't even care a few years ago that your business is riding on? Sure. we got a lot more to figure out there. But I, So just to tee that up, I, Scott said two things that I think are, are really uh, important to just maybe re-emphasize. Um, one of those is these are whole systems problems. They're extremely complex. Um, and, and not only the, the infrastructure is complex, but then lay, lay, overlay people and politics on top of that, and the system, like, now, now you've got a picture of the, the complexity of the system. So systems are really complex. And at the same time, and Scott alluded to this earlier, the, the change that cities are going to see in the next 10 to 15 years are on the scale of industrial revolution, right? Like massive, massive change. It's just, Googling on the way over here, trucking. Trucking is the number one industry in 30 states. Did you know that? Leading employer in 30 states, trucking. Um, crossroads, where Herb's located, 65% of the land use is for automobiles. 65% of the most, in, our most vibrant, most uh, innovative neighborhood in the city, 65% of it's dedicated to the automobile. So only with autonomous vehicles. Leave aside all the auto, other automation. Only with autonomous vehicles, think about all of those jobs being gone, and all of that land use being changed. Uh, and that's the scale of change that cities are going to see in the next 15 years. Right? So as a city planner, which is my training, it's just a really fascinating moment to be working, to be thinking about cities, to be thinking about these problems, and to be trying to help 
Um, some cities be winners because there are going to be winners and losers in the next 15 years. Um, and the ones, in my opinion, the ones that understand that data is the raw material of innovation in the next 15 years are going to be the winners. You know, Angie, what what might a new airport in this city look like, contain, include? In fact, I heard a group of um, experts in this topic speak not long ago. And uh, several things that stood out to me as convenience is the one thing that they want to make sure is still available to everyone in the Kansas City area. So a single terminal airport doesn't mean you have to park further away. You can still get there. Uh, but it provides us more amenities once you get into the airport. So having a single uh, security checkpoint, that allows you to open up more security uh, stations when needed all in one spot, rather than having long lines at single security uh, stations, which we have right now. A lot of airports are now trending to making it more of an experience rather than a necessary evil. And so that's where I think we can capitalize, is trying to make uh, Kansas City Airport one of those. Um, if you've ever flown, I think it's LaGuardia, where you can sit down at one of the restaurants and there's an iPad and you just order your food from the iPad. Those are starting to be more popular. Uh, I think it's in London, London City Airport, where you can actually order food to be delivered to where you are, or order it to be picked up from any of the restaurants that are there. Just that convenience and accessibility uh, to be able to have that for you. Everyone has their smartphones and the data is all there. It's a matter of making it convenient for you. I'm going to leave you with a couple of thoughts. Uh, one of which uh, Tom Beach said several years ago. He says, go out, get work, do work, get paid. It's just that simple. It's what makes all of our boats rise. So I challenge you to go out and make that happen. And the second thing I want to share with you is that um, our motto here at Black and Beach, when someone asks what you do, is we say, we're building a world of difference. And KU is the one that taught us all to do that. So go out and build a world of difference for the people that work with us. Thank you all for coming here. Thank you.